Hi guys, today I'm going to give you 10 OP tips to help survive indefinitely. Tip number one, always wear a football helmet with a decent percentage on it. Anytime I'm not using my umbrella, I'm wearing a football helmet because it will save me from surprise attacks. Football helmets soak 80% of damage for 315 HP worth of damage, meaning if a monster hits you that you don't see, you aren't losing a huge chunk of health. For example, Say it's my first time playing through the game, and I encounter Deerclops for the first time in the middle of the night, and he attacks me before I even see him. And he deals 75 points of damage. Wow. Okay, now if you're Maxwell, you're already dead. You're out. You're gonna need to find a respawn, and once you find that respawn, you're gonna try and get back to your base, and you're gonna freeze to death. Most other characters, they're on half HP now. They got one more hit left or they die. And that's even if they were at full HP before. Now. Let's redo that with a football helmet. Instead, you get hit for 15 HP. Our buddy Maxwell, he's still alive. And most characters are only 10% HP down. It just generally makes everything way safer for the cost of one pigskin and rope, which is super easy to get. And I also need to mention, even if you never get hit, it provides 20% rain resistance. So there's no real reason not to wear it. Tip number two, always carry a good weapon. My go-tos are the Dark Sword, Tentacle Spike, and Handbat. No matter where you go and don't starve, there will be monsters that are way stronger than you, so you need to tech up so you can annihilate them. This isn't only for protecting yourself either. You need weapons to gather resources such as meat. Tip number three, use proper food sources. And no, improved farms and rabbit traps are not proper food sources. I see you typing that comment, don't you do it. Don't you put it down there. What you should be using for food is berries, bunny man farms, cacti, and relocated spider dens. They're just generally way quicker ways of getting your hunger up, and they're just great overall. I'll be doing a full video on these next week, so be sure to check that out. I'll add a card to the top right once it's done. Tip number four, travel during the night. For whatever reason, many players think it's smart to wait by a fire during the night. Unless it's winter and you're doing so to warm up, stop doing that. Instead, use a torch or lantern to continue gathering resources throughout the night. Tip number five is very important. It's that you smash the like button. Nah, I'm just kidding, but seriously, smash the like button. It helps a lot with this whole YouTube algorithm thing, you know? Okay, so number five is actually chunk gathering resources. You'll gather more resources faster if you focus on one type of resource at once. For instance, say you need to make a crock pot and a presto habitator. So you go gather six twigs, six charcoal, nine stones, 16 logs, four rabbits, six silk. Rather than gathering that, go gather enough resources for six crock pots and do a separate trip for the Presta Habitator because you will want the six crockpots later anyways and because you can't even carry everything for a Presta Habitator and crockpots without giving up tools because the inventory space is so limited. Tip number six, have enemies fight amongst themselves. Some enemies are super aggressive, such as hounds, beefalo and heat, frogs, deer clops, burger, the list goes on. These mobs will kill other mobs for you, giving you tons of free resources. Tip number seven, use magic. Magic has some of the strongest endgame items and most people don't even realize it. Two of my favorites are the Dark Sword, which is the strongest weapon in the game, and the Life Giving Amulet, which allows you to respawn anywhere. And those are just two items. If you want to learn about how OP magic is, hit the link at the top right of your screen. Tip number eight is super important. Learn to kite. Kiting allows you to avoid 95% of enemies' attacks, meaning you can fight them without taking any damage. This allows you to leverage your health better and can save you in a pinch. If you wanna learn how to do that, I'll add a link at the top right to my guide for it. Tip number nine, don't fear monsters once you have gear. With the proper gear, you are stronger brute strength wise than any other mob in the game. That includes raid bosses. On top of that, you're not a stupid monster. You can outwit them too. And tip number 10. Most people don't know how temperature works, so they buy to it incorrectly. So I'm gonna tell you how it actually works. Most people tell you just wear winter clothing or summer clothing, uh, that's not right. Instead, during winter, make a thermal stone and make certain you're overheating before going exploring. Overheating is not when your thermal stone turns orange. It's when the outer edge of your screen turns orange and makes a 
sizzling sound. This will make your temperature 65 when you leave the base, instead of 31, which is when your thermal stone turns orange. Cause overheating, start a fire, or sit between two roaring fire pits. To deal with overheating in the summer, just live underground. The ambient temperature underground is lower in DST than the surface temperature. Watch out though, in regular don't starve, this tip doesn't work as temperature works differently in each game. And that's it for today. Like the video if you did, or subscribe. Bye guys.